What is the best blood pressure monitor? My name is Dave. I'm a pharmacist and I really want to answer this question because if you go to amazon.com for instance, type in blood pressure monitor, you get 592 results. And that is just crazy. So what is one to do? Um, I found a research paper. This is it right here. And they tested 331 devices for accuracy. They're looking at blood pressure monitors here. Out of those 331, 251 of them passed all their tests for accuracy. So that's a 76% pass rate. So if you're to blindfold yourself and throw darts at a dartboard, and that's how you're going to pick your blood pressure monitor, you would have a 76% chance of getting a pretty good blood pressure monitor. Uh, but is that good enough? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to do better. Maybe you want to get closer to 100%. I know if it were me, I would want to know that my blood pressure monitor was good. That's what this paper is about. Dig deeper into this paper. What do we see? Um, there was one big differentiator, one test that was the differentiator, uh, the static pressure test. They categorized the results based on the cost of the monitor, and then again based on clinical validation status, and then again based on the years of use. And basically everything that I boxed right there, so cost, if it was more than 10 pounds, which is about 12 US dollars, that was good, 90% pass rate. If it was clinically validated, it had a 96% pass rate. And if the monitor was four years old or newer, then it had a 95% pass rate. All the other monitors were relatively poor performing. So that's good to know. If you're shopping for a monitor, you're probably not really concerned about the years of use because you're looking for something brand new. So you're focused on cost and clinical validation status. And the clinical validation status is pretty much a yes or no. Right. So let's let's kind of hone in here on cost. So let's get a little more detailed so you can see the trend is the more you pay, the better the pass rate. And that trend here, it goes that 31 greater than or equal to 31 pounds. One U.S. dollar is equal to about uh, 1.2 pounds. So 31, that's approximately 37 U.S. dollars. So if you're spending like $37 or more, you're probably getting a pretty good monitor. Um, so is it worth spending around a hundred bucks? Cause there are monitors out there that are like 80 bucks, a hundred bucks, 130 bucks. Are those worth it? So in this study, like I said, there were 331 blood pressure monitors tested. Only seven of them had a price tag of 81 pounds or higher. Uh, 81 pounds would be close to a hundred bucks us dollars. Um, but it is worth noting, those seven monitors had a 100% pass rate. So they were very accurate, dead accurate. Uh, so if you're, if you're not happy with the number like 94% and you're like, I really want to know it's right, I really want to know it's good, then maybe it is worth it for you to spend more. Uh, that being said, I have a number one choice for a low budget option and a number one choice for a quote unquote high budget option. So first, my low budget option, number one choice is the Omron Bronze. Okay. There's a link in the description below. This is a beautiful, beautiful device. It has the perfect uh, features like that match up with what we just talked about. The price point is around 40 bucks. Okay. It's got a two year warranty. So Omron stands behind their product. That's great. It's also registered with the FDA as a medical device and it's clinically validated for accuracy. So it has everything we're looking for without overpaying at all, right? Now, my number one choice for a high budget blood pressure monitor is, and I own this one, by the way, it is the Cardio Arm Wireless Blood Pressure Monitor. Um, now there's a link for this in the description below as well. It has a one year warranty, FDA cleared, clinically validated, retails for around 75 to 100 bucks. I think the MSRP is around $100, but there are some deals around this time of year. You might be able to find it for $75. Um, so like I said, I have this one. I like it because it syncs with my smartphone, records every measurement, and I have history going back over a year now. And my father, he's more of a bare bones guy, just wants the cuff, push a button, see the number, and be done with it. That's a good candidate for the Omron bronze. And I believe that's what my father has actually. Um, so it's all about what you want. Um, they're both good options, very, very good options. Um, 
So that's it for right now, but I just want to point out I have a book coming out soon, and I'm going to be announcing that on this channel. The book is for people who have had atrial fibrillation or SVT or atrial flutter, and they had an ablation for that arrhythmia. And going forward, they want to do everything they can to minimize their risk of developing another arrhythmia. And that's what this book is all about. I think I'm going to title the book after ablation, but that's a working title. I haven't finalized it yet. So if you're interested, please subscribe, and I'll post an announcement when the book is out. And thank you for tuning in. See you next time.